This is a HeadGum Podcast. Here's a question. What is care slash of? Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients personally tailored for your exact needs. So I got an email and they were like, take this quiz. So I took a quiz, super easy, super fun, super chill, lots of pictures, truly kept me engaged, bright colors, good for me. And it literally designed the vitamins that I should be taking. And truly I read through it and I was like, this is right. I should be taking these vitamins. And there's tons of benefits to vitamins. So even if you try to maintain a healthy diet, guess what? It can be hard to get all those nutrients your body needs for long-term health. Vitamins also fill the important gaps that your body is missing from your diet. And get this, 90%. It's a lot of people. That's almost all the people. They fall short of the FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. Also, the recommendations are built on clinical research with traditional medicine, with input from doctors and nutritionists. It includes individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins and supplements for easy grab and go. Because you can't be shaking stuff out of bottles being like, what's this and the other thing? Nope, these are just wrapped up for you. And guess what? It costs about 20% less uh, when compared to similar brands at drugstores and local health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized Care of Vitamins, visit careof.com and enter the promo code DATEME for 25%. I'm saying it again because you might have missed it, but you get 25 to 5% of your first month of personalized vitamins via Care of. Visit takecareof.com the promo code is date me what a treat you'll be swallowing big old vitamins in no time bye bye Why won't you date me? A podcast where I try to figure out why I'm still so single, even though I will fuck you without dinner. (laughs) Um, (laughs) My guest today is my dear friend. She's a lady who I've been friends with since I moved to L.A. She's you can see her this week on my show, Loosely Exactly Nicole. She plays a lady I work with at a store, and we don't get along. She's also been on Comedy Bang Bang. She has a short called Relationship Goals. We improvise every Sunday together uh, on Search History at UCB Franklin at 11 p.m. It's Marcy Jero! Did I say your last name right? I'm always scared. I think so. Jaro? Jaro. Jaro. Hey, whatever. I'm from the South. Mm-hmm. I used to call you Jaro. And then you said it, and I was like, ah, oh, shit, I've been saying it wrong for so you long. You know, that happens a lot. And I don't care. <laughs> That's not my problem. <laughs> I don't mind either. I, uh, it's almost like beer? <laughs> beer? Buyers? I'll be like, buyer, but like, truly. I don't even correct people. It's a hard name. It is. There's a lot of A, E, and U's. Maybe there's one of each. <laughs> yeah, at least. <laughs> J E A U R U. Yeah. Well, that's you didn't spell it, but you name you name checked a lot of the letters that are in it. I just wanted to, you know, stop by some letters, you know. <laughs> so, Marcy, I know you're single. I'm single, not looking to mingle. So you are. I know you were on Tinder for a hot second. I have been on Tinder. I've been on all the dating apps very briefly, mm-hmm. but they're. Bad. They are bad. They are terrible. They're bad because they give men carte blanche to be just as Ooh. bad as they want to be. What's that word? Carte blanche. That's a good word. Just means they can like they have full uh, access. Like they, they, there's nothing stopping them ah. from being one. They do an annoying thing on mm-hmm. Tinder, which I think because I, I listen to your podcast, I'm a big fan. Thank you. Um, what they do is they just swipe right on uh-huh. everyone so that they can then see what their options are of interest applicants i do that now i'm living like a man that's everyone is lying (laughs) 
Yeah, you're right. Because sometimes I feel bad when like a nasty dude is like, hey, and I'm like, ugh. Then I'm like, oh yeah, I've been swiping right on everybody. Yeah, it's like he got the validation and was so <laughs> excited that this beautiful woman like oh, was you. in his like uh, acceptant box, and then he yeah. was like, no, she doesn't like me either, mom. <laughs> I just want to read uh, a profile I came across. I posted it on my Instagram, but I do want to talk about it. So Michael 30, who lives five miles away from me, or was five miles away from me at the time, his profile says, women's opinions matter little to me, so please keep them to yourselves. And nah, I'm not going to watch your favorite Netflix show. I'm only interested in white women for relationships. POC, people of color, are my cum dumpster. If you're worthy, I could make you a sex slave. If you're lucky, I like submissive women in and out of the kitchen. <laughs> hey, this is on Tinder? This is on Tinder. I swiped right on him because I was like, I have to know what that conversation is. Yeah. Where he was like, hi, Nicole. I'm glad you liked what you saw. I want you to be my cum dumpster. Don't you think this is just a troll? That this is not a real person. This is uh, just like someone who made a fake profile. You think? Yeah, I think it's like that time that someone in our community made a fake profile of a, a girl with special needs mm -hmm. and then was like, oh my God, people actually liked her, which is totally fucked up because people with special needs can, can totally date. Love but I also think he's just like, or he or she is making maybe a fake profile. Maybe. To see how awful they can be. Maybe, but I have matched with men who've said like, misogynistic but they wait things they wait though they don't put it up front he's too aware of his misogyny for me to think it's real maybe do you know what i mean i guess like most I misogynists just... would tell you all day long that they're not a misogynist just like a racist would be like i'm uh -huh. not a racist but dee -dee 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 -dee. Mm -hmm. well also he used poc which is like a very hip way to say people of yeah, color that's not what you're gonna call those people if no, you're actually you call that him guy. A niglet <laughs> Yeah, you call him a. I can't say that. No, <laughs> I would but never. I, can. I uh, call. I, I yesterday called myself a little piglet though. <laughs> that is funny, and I feel like it upset our you friend Paul. Piglet. I was like, give this little piglet something, and he was like, oh, I don't like it. You call yourself a piglet. I mean, that was my nickname when I was growing up. That's not nice. The my kids sis, call you my that? sister and. My sister's six years older than me, Ugh. and all of her high school friends called me piglet. What did you do? Did you like oink? No. Oh, I wouldn't like. They call me Pickle Lake from Winnie the Pooh. Oh, I thought it was because you were chubby. Yes, that too, but also because I was adorable. <laughs> I don't know. I just took pictures of them when they were drinking underage. That's what I did. That's very funny. <laughs> uh, what else are you looking for? Um, I'm looking for some direct messages that I got. Um, I don't like soup, so I get a lot of messages about people also not liking soup. I mean, you really lead with that. Very funny. I hate soup. It's so dumb. Let's I love see. soup so much. I soup love tomato is bad. soup. Tomato soup is so good. I don't understand. It's like hot ketchup. Yeah, I love hot ketchup so much. Don't you love ketchup and fries? Uh, yeah. That's what soup is a great thing where you can pretend like it's a better food. I guess. But you're like, it's low in calories and it's really filling because it takes up a lot of volume in your stomach. So when you're dieting or anything dumb like that, <laughs> you can eat some soup and be like, well, this sort of tastes like pizza. No. Gross. I want to read this DM real quick. Do you and not then... even like French onion soup, though? No, it's disgusting. It's, it's like brown broth with little floatums in there, and it's covered in cheese. So it's like, the cheese is good. Uh, like what's under it. Yeah, no. I've seen your turkey slop, though. I know I what you eat. I love turkey slop. <laughs> I've been eating so much turkey slop. Yeah, I know turkey you... slop is just ground turkey, um, like marinara sauce, ricotta cheese, Parmesan cheese, maybe some mozzarella. Sounds like a soup to me. That's not a soup. And you put it over, um, you put it over noodles, but I put it over green beans. So healthy. I'm trying to be That's a great. little healthier. Um, you know, I'm trying to be less healthy. I just learned how to make gravy, and I'm putting it <laughs> on everything. Gravy is like a lot of flour, right? Like it's flour a little flour. And, it's not a lot. It's like oh. two to three tablespoons of flour. And then what? And then like whatever, like you can do if you make a brown gravy. You so it's like whatever oil, fat, or butter, whatever mm -hmm. you want to use. Um, a little couple, two, three tablespoons of flour until it's all absorbed. Mm -hmm. Then you kind of brown it to whatever color you want it without burning it okay. and make sure it's smooth, not lumpy. Uh -huh. And then you can <laughs> add like chicken stock to oh. it and then boil it till it reduces down to a mm. nice creamy, or you can make a white gravy. I 
Oh, God, I'm horny. <laughs> I've made white gravy on biscuits. Yes. Sometimes food makes me horny. Sometimes before sleep, I'll like look at food and then masturbate. <laughs> well, girl, you mean, wait, that's upsetting. Oh, God, you got to tell Mary about that. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's my therapist. Sometimes, yeah, I'm just like, ooh, this food looks so good. I got to get my little vibe out. Well, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make that pussy slick because yes. I can make a white gravy yes. now. And I made it on my yes. first try. Put some white gravy inside of me. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this, um, I asked for like nasty, uh, <laughs> nasty reviews uh, on on iTunes. Then I'm, I also say you can inbox me some nasty stuff. So this man, uh, Tommy Asterisk, on Instagram slid into my DMs. He said he rewrote this like three or four times. Um, because he doesn't know how to come on to me without trying to explain how much I want to come on you. <gasps> there, <laughs> there are many an Instagram photo with a like and a comment where I just place the smiley face with like the drool coming out because I want to eat your pussy more than <gasps> I want to exist in the free world. <laughs> if you react positively to this review, I will Derek Rose into your DM and shoot my shot. Also Derek Rose, because I get so weak in the knees, I can hardly speak. P.S. I would suck your toes and eat your butt, <laughs> but only if you're into it. P.P.P.S. I'm putting the down to fuck bit uh, from your Tinder on all my dating profiles. So Tommy asterisk, Thank you. What a treat to read. I mean, I, I don't enjoyed think she, it. She's not going to let you suck her toes. I'll no, tell you right I now. I truly do not like toes. I think they're gross. Um, and I don't co-sign anyone wanting to suck on a toe. Like, what if there's, like, lint from a sock on your toe? I mean, but you'll eat a butt. Oh, I'll eat a butt until the sun goes so down. So one has poo-poo, the other one has a little cotton fabric. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, the other one will have cotton fabric, too, you from toilet paper. you wash your butt. Yeah, but you could wash your feet. Yes, but like, I don't know. If you can wash a butt, you can wash your feet. Well, so, yeah, I guess. I don't know. A butt seems better than feet. Okay. Hey, girl. Diddy Prime said, if you sit on my face, I'd eat your eat my way to your heart, which is really nice. That's Jesus just like Christ. kind of cute. You don't I don't know. Cute? You know, I am not the type of person that likes someone to lead with sex. <laughs> I grew up too Catholic, too repressed. And I'm not comfortable with someone coming at me with that kind of vibe. Fair. I don't like it. Not that I don't like sex. It, that's not the issue. Mm -hmm. Down to clown once we're there. But I don't need Down to be talking to about it. Like, I don't like casual talk of it because it feels like it takes away a little bit of the magic. Mm -hmm. So I like, I don't mind forward sex things. Well, as a joke, clearly, because your whole life, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am a very I'm a very sexual person. Yes. I like having sex. Uh, I don't like to wait if I'm attracted to you. Let's get it done. Uh, but I don't mind an opening line from a dude being like, I think you're hot. I I would love to hook up with you. Yeah. Let's try to get together. What I don't like is someone being like, you're hot. I want your butt. And then like just a lot of back and forth. I don't want to sex with you. I don't know you. Right. Um, but I just I also, feel like yeah, well, go ahead. Sorry, I also just like a message. Just like, can I take you out? That's very nice. I would like the idea that someone wants to know who I am because a mm -hmm. man or a lot of people would, if you f made it where they could do it, would fuck the couch you're sitting on. Yeah. So like them wanting to fuck something, <laughs> not really that impressive. Doesn't really make me feel anything. It's just sure. like, sure, you'd like to put your penis in a mm -hmm. warm, wet thing. Got it. <laughs> you should try like a beef dish, like a beef Wellington. Gross. But that, or that gravy you make. Yeah, you could Ooh. put it in my gravy. But if someone was like, you sound really interesting. I'd like to get to know you better. That would. That's kind of more how mm -hmm. I how. To intrigue a woman like me, fair. Um, I guess I do. I do, I. Well, it's not one or the other, too. No, like, no, I know. You know, like if you like to know that someone really wants to fuck you because mm -hmm. that makes you feel good. That makes you you're feel like, good. Obviously, everyone wants to know me. Yes. Whenever someone wants to get to know me, I'm like, well, yes, I'm very loud. <laughs> I live a I live a way now, that most people don't. I will say this: if after I have sex with someone 
and someone were to say something like that to me, it would mean a lot more to me. Like if they all they could say is like, I can't wait to be inside you again, like that kind of, which would be too forward before we have sex, mm-hmm. but after we already have, yes, that I am down for. Okay. But you can't just be like, cause I would fuck anything anyway, so I might as well <laughs> fuck you. Like that doesn't do it for me, you know? Fair. Um, That's just my train of thought because I'm a little insecure about how men operate. Yes. Men are, in my experience, just so confusing. When I was in Costa Rica, I think I explained this to you, but I haven't talked about it on the podcast. I went to Costa Rica because I'm a fancy lady. I just like to not be in the country for New Year's. It's my new tradition. Uh, I'm there with you. I, like, or at least not point? in my I don't home be city. In my home, yeah, I don't want to be in my home with city. People. I want to be with people I've chosen to be near. I was on an airplane. I was actually getting a ticket scanned at midnight because they were doing the countdown. Three, two, mm-hmm. boop, and they scanned my ticket. And I was like, I'm very happy Where to be. Where were you going? I just went to Tennessee for a family reunion. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That looked like fun. It was great. But I met this. So we, so I went with my friend and we went to this bar called Monkey Bar. And everyone was like, it's wild. That's where people go on Friday. You're going to have a great time. So we go and I was like waiting for a drink and my friend was in the bathroom. And all of a sudden this like hand comes down next to me. And I was like, ugh, this man is like so close. He's in my space. And he's like, you have to be more assertive to get a drink. And I was like, ugh, I mean, I'm waiting for a friend, so I don't care. He's like, come on, let me get you a drink. And I was like, whatever. And then he like was flirting with me. And then I realized he was flirting with me. And I was like, what are the chances of being in Costa Rica and meeting like an American man? And then I looked around. I was like, oh, this is like a very touristy spot. Mm -hmm. Everyone here is a gringo. And uh, we like kept talking. And then Sashir and I were like, let's go. And he was like, well, I'll come with you guys. And then later was like, oh, my friends want to stay here. We're like, all right, whatever. So I give him like my contact information through Instagram. And then we're like just DMing each other all day. And I'm like, I think he likes me. Like, I think he's into it. And then he invites me to this bar uh, the next day. And he was like, come to my hostel. We'll like have dinner. We can like hang out a little bit. And I was like, well, we're ready at dinner. And he's like, well, just come to the bar. And I was like, all right. So we go to the bar. I show up. And he looks so elated to see me. Like, he's so excited to see me. It's embarrassing for him. <laughs> he's like, Nicole! And I'm like, slow your roll. I don't fucking know you. But then, like, he hugs me. He kisses me on the cheek, like, a hundred times. <gasps> and then we start drinking. And then we, like, run into other people he's we know straight? from New York. He allegedly is straight. Okay. And then finally I was like, what is going on? Why won't he make out with me? So then I was like, are you single? And he was like, well, I'm in a complicated Burr. thing. And I was like, that's... Not what I wanted to hear. He's and I one was of those like, in a different area code guys. Yes. Right? And I said, would anyone get mad at you if we made out? He goes, no. And then didn't make out with me. And I was like, what the fuck? And then all night we just like kept talking. And then by the end of the night, I was so drunk. And I had done some Molly. And I had done like a little edible. And I was <laughs> I was like out of my mind. He, he was like, like talking, a little buffet of fun. A little buffet of drugs. And he's like talking to someone, the music's super loud. And I was talking to my friend. I was just like, he's bad. He's a bad man. She's like, I think so. And then we're like, we're leaving. So then we're leaving. And he's like, let me walk you out. So we walk out. And he's like, when am I going to see you again? I threw up my like peace sign. I was like, you're never going to see me again. He was like, come on, I'm in LA sometimes. I was like, truly, you will never see me again. Then he was like, but I want to send you memes. And I was like, then send me memes. You have my Instagram contact information. And then he was like, but like when I'm in LA, you, you could like meet my friends. And I was like, what is this? Like, why have we skipped like levels to no, this why am i meeting your friend that man is being so honest with you because you know what he's saying what i want to show you off that i know you because if he's not gonna fuck you in costa rica he ain't gonna fuck you in the states i guess not he wants to be like i this girl who i think is a really funny comedian is he, awesome but he didn't know who i was before him you don't think he looked you up come on so, you were pretty recognizable well you're the loudest woman in the world i would just google <laughs> who's the loudest black woman i've ever met and then i'd go be like oh a couple photos would come up and it'd be like monique oh there's nicole like i think he i think you're more googleable than you realize i i just he when he approached me especially he, once he's looking at your instagram then well, he knows exactly that was like the end of the night but he already seemed so into me beforehand i know but like then you saw him later Yes. So so he knew by that point. Oh, by the second night yes, he knew what who I saying. was. He yes. was like, sort of like, I could maybe get down with this. And then he was like, oh, yeah. Well, he kind of chickened out because he has a girlfriend. And then he was like, but I need my friends to know this girl wanted to fuck me. I mean. Because it makes them feel so good. It inflates their little stupid egos. I mean, but 
Men will do a bunch of stuff just to feel good about themselves. So she and I were truly confused because it didn't seem like he knew who I was at first, but seemed super into it. But me. then he figured it but out. Then after he knew who I was, seemed still into it. He was probably gonna always be too scared to follow through because mm-hmm. he has a girlfriend, and then was like, "I need to show people this little almost trophy I got." I guess maybe it was like very little chuckle weird. fucker. I. It was it was very bizarre. Because and why would he say, I want you to meet my friends? Like, what I have a crazy no thing. idea. But or like, even I've if had... you weren't famous, it might just be like, I need my friends to... Like, people do that sometimes mm-hmm. anyway to be like, oh, great. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put you in the friend zone and you can still make me feel good because I know you're attracted to me. Ah, uh, I did make it clear. And he... I don't know. Well, congratulations, a man that Nicole's attracted to. You have a body at all. <laughs> He had a body and he was cute. I was very You're sad. very sweet. Once a man does anything that like I don't feel, I'm like, they're disgusting. Their hairline's receding. <laughs> That's the worst thing that can happen. They'll never get their hair back. I can lose weight. They'll never get their hair back. I hate them. <laughs> I always, I'm like, maybe he'll come around and love me. No, I'm like, hopefully they'll get into they'll be arrested for something else bad they did because they're bad i think i get vengeful though do you i think it goes back to like my daddy issues well see maybe that's like not it's not my daddy issues. my mommy my we're very like a black and white world Mm -hmm. of like this is good and this is bad and once someone is bad to me then i think they're bad all the way around which i have to like really work with so like once i'm off of someone Mm -hmm. i am off of them and they need to go away and feel that I don't want them. I don't like to give them anything after that. I give people a lot of chances before I'm like, you're done. No. Also, I find that once I, t- once I like turn on them, then they want me so much more, mm. but that's too bad. Cause I already turned on them. Fair. I, yeah. It just, for a man, I also have a just man a s- can do anything to me and I'll be like, well, I guess I should give you one more chance. No, a man could truly just like not give me as long of a hug as he gave another woman <laughs> and I'll be like, die. Yeah. Die. It's so funny that we're on such opposite spectrums of that. Cause you know me. Yeah. You I know let me. men fucking <laughs> just be so awful to me. And I'm just like, I don't know, but like maybe I'll give him and another you know chance. Me, a man could do a very slight a aggressive man could thing not to me. Say hello to you and you're like, he's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell me, you were on Tinder for a little bit. We <laughs> touched on that briefly and then yeah. it went away. Went away. I've been on like, I've done OkCupid, I've done Tinder, I've done Bumble, and I've literally never met anyone off of any mm-hmm. of those. The closest thing was once, remember Time Out New York in New York? Yes, they were you this, part of the singles edition? I was one of the singles. Hold and, on, we're going to get into that after our break. Okay. So let's take a break right now. beautiful break okay tell me about time out new york singles edition so i was chosen as one of like the singles you gotta Mm -hmm. meet or whatever it is and then you so they you go to a photo shoot they do like a professional photo Mm -hmm. shoot and ask you some questions and like someone contacted me it was a new york fireman Ah! uh and he was like hitting me up being like let's go on a date we Uh had a date at somewhere one of the bars in the time warner center okay so is it landmark maybe they have a delicious steak they're open till like 2 a.m. So I like to go at midnight. I wish I could remember, but I truly can't. Okay. But it was like, I don't know, up on the third or fourth floor. I think it was Landmark. Okay. It's one of my favorite okay. places. So he was like, let's meet. And then like during the day, sent me an email being like, my phone's dead, but can we meet an hour earlier? And I was like, sure, no problem. So I get there at the proposed time mm-hmm. and I wait for an hour hour no he did not show up but my friend leslie lived across the street so i went there got high and was like fuck this dude and then Mm -hmm. he uh sends me a text being like like 45 minutes later being like where are you and i was like i was there when you said to be Mm -hmm. and he's like oh i didn't get your email back my phone's been dead And I was like, I don't care. And then I was like, well, I don't believe you. So goodbye. Uh, Because I don't Uh because it was just too many things like who loses. You can I don't know. Just like Mm -hmm. we live in a time where you can get in touch with someone, especially if you propose a change of plans. Mm -hmm. Call the restaurant and send a a waiter over to tell that person. This is like an episode of Sex in the City where it's 
a Carrie's birthday. She goes to that Mexican restaurant. Nobody shows up. She gets home, and there's all these voicemails. Yes. But also, she didn't have a cell phone, so I guess it's not it the same thing. It was a little different. Um, <laughs> so it was just Sorry like that. Sorry I brought it up. Out. But also, like, I didn't care. I was just like, you you can't be bad before we meet. Mm-hmm. I don't care for you now. I would have gone and met him. That's yeah. I'm so thirsty for dick. Like I'm so thirsty for penis. I mean, I think that's fair if you're like only looking to get laid. I know at this point I'm looking for a relationship. Was but, that the only person who contacted you on time out in New York? I think so. I just don't like. I guess I'm like just like a basic fat white lady and like <laughs> not like doing enough with it to like compensate for the fat what do you mean i mean i think i'm a cute girl and i know that i'm really like fun and special but i don't know if men are like clicking on me to be like that's my ideal to be fair all of the men i've ever dated i'm positive i would not have swiped right on fair because i don't think it's a good way to pick people it's a terrible it's way a to really pick bad people. way because everyone always go they go a little bit out of their league and honestly yes. you're not gonna even like those people that are better looking than you yeah. Because they're stupid. God doesn't give you two scoops of anything. Huh. You get you or does it, he gives you two scoops of one thing, but not two scoops of many things. You get two scoops mm-hmm. of funny or two scoops of looks or two scoops of like brains. Our you friend give Madeline us, got double scooped. She Madeline got, is so pretty and so funny. But he didn't give her no scoops of confidence about I that. I think she's or got cockiness. Com- she's confident, but she ain't cocky. She's not cocky. And you gotta be cocky to be brainy and good looking. I don't know. It works. I think she got double scooped. She did. Okay, fine. She got big old titties. She's gonna hate hearing this. Yeah, Maybe she doesn't want. Honestly, <laughs> like, she didn't ever have to do dating. She would get swiped on plenty though. Oh, but, she like, would. Yeah, I'm not like I'm not good bait on those. Places. I feel as if I'm not good bait either. I'm gonna have you look at my dating profiles. Although I did have a comment where someone was like, "Can you switch up your dating profile because it's getting redundant?" But. It's like my actual dating profile where I'm trying to like well, date somebody. Well, maybe you should take some of the feedback and then but, like, see how that does. Everybody seems to like it. Oh, well, let me see. Hold on. I have to sign in through Facebook. Why the hell? Which is so annoying. Also, I'm on a new dating app. So I'm on five dating apps. Name them. I'm on Tinder, Bumble, Raya, OkCupid, okay and Coffee Meets Bagel. Okay. Coffee Meets Bagel seems insane. So. On Coffee Meets Bagel, you have to have, like, beans, and you spend beans to like the bagel, and then to get more beans, you have to, like, play this game, and I was like, this is getting embarrassing, that I'm like, I need beans, I need beans to like this man! It's very confusing, and I don't understand it, and nobody's liked me. No, you can scoop my vagina right out, and I'll never use it again before I try to play a bunch of games to do it. All right, let's see. Okay, here's Nicole with a great big penis. Yeah, yeah, my dildo pick. It's on all my dating apps. I think it's a. I think this is a great, like, fun Facebook pick for you. I okay. don't think it's the best dating app pick because, I, as someone who feels like everything I see in the world is immediately a challenge to can I live up to this or not? Uh huh. That I, as a man, think. But I don't have one of those. As a man. I would ne- I would be like, oh, if she likes that, then like never. But like, she couldn't possibly like that. It's too big. You look like you like it in this picture. I it would split me open. I know, but it it gives the appearance of like I'm that you're a size queen. Ah, uh, but I am. Yes, and so I think a lot of men don't feel that proud of their penis size. Really. I think they'll talk about the game. I've been fucked by a micro dick who didn't seem to know that it was a micro dick. Well, yeah, but he was, but, you know, I'm just saying that I think that might be a thing that scares men. That's all I'm saying is mm-hmm. I think that this might intimidate okay. men because it says this girl's a size queen. It would be like if I saw a guy next to like a poster of a, of, a, a huge ass hmm. and I'd be like, well, you don't want this square little Ooh, thing. But I got a big old ass. You do. So you would be like, I'm into that. Okay. This is adorable. Describe it. You are um, in front of a pink wall with cacti around you, Mm -hmm. and you're wearing overalls, shorts, with a stripe, uh, with the classic um, uh, hipster lady shirt, (laughs) and your hair is natural, and you have glasses on, and your nails are, yeah, they're not the most obscene nails I've seen. (laughs) But you look so... They're obscene now. Yeah, they are obscene now. I like them. (laughs) But I think this is like... 
a really beautiful like dress down, Nicole. Oh. Because you always give a lot of face. This is new, right? That is new. I did switch it up. So the person who's mad about it, I did switch. This is really cute. I would lead with this one because it gives okay. me everything about Lauren well, Lackis on Instagram was like, this would be good for your dating profile. I, and I was like, thank you, Lauren. I mean, maybe not lead, but like this, it's good in this position that I get to see it soon because mm-hmm. I get, I know that you got that body and I know that you're adorable. Oh, thank you. All right. So I'll just... have you zoom in on the pins one's a vibrator <laughs> and one is like a banana shaped like a dick so i think that's how you show people you love dick not with a <laughs> giant dildo like i think it's more subtle like it doesn't take over my life mm-hmm. but hey i like it i do i love a dick so here we have nicole you look like a cat burglar trying to get mm-hmm. up a set of books bookshelves <laughs> a bookshelf mm-hmm. and it shows your body because you're in a onesie so it shows your body and it shows you're adorable you look great um this one's cute. I think it's sort of like, I'm a funny lady, mm-hmm. which is good because people need to know. And then this is you humping a tree. <laughs> and I can tell you're humping because I can't see your bottom lip. So I know that you're biting it. Thank you. And you're wearing. A lot of people don't realize I'm humping a tree. Well, I've also heard the podcast. So it was kind of. In oh, but dang. You are have amazing shoes on. And I God, that's a big ass. What a beautiful <laughs> ass. It's so big. Oh, it's so big. Um, And then you would Clyde and you're wearing yellow and you look so bright and sunny. This could be another first pick, too. Okay. I, I would only want to say um, to grab them with a with a with a neutral with a mm-hmm. with a neutral pick and then be like, all right, if you made it this far, you can see me Oh, Then the next one is you inside of a heart shaped thing and your legs are spread eagle and you're <laughs> snarling at me. <laughs> It's just fun. Yeah, you seem like um, uh, you're like an Eartha kit. <laughs> you're Ooh, like a big Eartha kit. Thank kit. you. Maybe you should put that in your profile. I'm a big old I'm Eartha a kit. Big ass Eartha kit. And I can. No, I can't do her voice. Um, if you want to look through, let's see what else do I have. Oh, I'm also on Hinge. Wait, do you want me to read the? I I'm got on a, six dating. Should apps. I read the? I got a fat ass. I know all this stuff. I that hasn't changed. So if you yeah. made it this far, you know what that says. Um, yeah, down to figure skate or fuck or farm. I mean, I think I'm. So you are just down to meet people on Tinder just to fuck still, right? Yes, but I also if it turned into something else, like I'm willing to go on a date with somebody and like see what happens. But since it's up there up front, it makes me think that might be one of your primary goals. Mm. That's all. Just because it's out in mm-hmm. front and center, you don't say anything about meeting someone to date. You do say that you would be down to farm, fuck, or figure skate. Mm-hmm. So that's all. All right, now what else? So you're no longer on dating apps, correct? I think I'm still on, and when I get very bored, I'll swipe through, but with not like a real, I don't know, I kind of feel like um, I do better in person. Are you looking to date or no? Because you haven't dated in a while. The thing is, like, I think the way I feel right now is I don't mind being alone. I've been having, like, a lot of, like, growing moments Mm. in my life where, like, I, you know, I... I, I'm trying to figure out how to be a Marcy that's like very happy and feels good about herself without anything else. And then I'll start adding on to that, Marcy. So I am in a spot in my life where I'm like, if I met someone, I would be interested in that. Mm-hmm. But I also like, I feel pretty um, disdainful about men in general right now because mm-hmm. of all this going on. And I, and even the best men sometimes are pretty disappointing when it comes to like women's issues. Mm-hmm. So I, and also like, I just had a lifetime of me having crushes on people that didn't quite reciprocate. And then in hindsight, I'm like, I was so like the way you were at that time in your life and the way I was like, I don't know. I'm just like so offended that like none of them liked me back. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Someone will like me and mm-hmm. then we'll see if I like them back. I'm done doing the other way. So I think that's where I'm at. Kind of like fair. Not that I'd never want to fall in love, but I'm like, it doesn't need to happen. And like, I think we're all sold this bill of goods that if you don't find love then your life is worthless. Mm-hmm. But I love a lot of things and a lot of people. And so I'm feeling good about that. And then, yeah, I think I I am getting to a place where I like myself enough where I'm like, I deserve to be pursued. Mm-hmm. And if you don't think so, then uh, great. You don't have to pursue me. But I'm not running after these boring men anymore. 
I love I love that. I love that so much. I think that's such a nice, healthy way to think about yourself, that I'm worth being pursued. I'm worth a man wanting me. I'm worth not having to do all the pursuing. Um, I personally do a lot of the pursuing. Mostly, I would say like 98% of the... Oh. The men in my life I've pursued. Absolutely, me too. That, that's my history mm-hmm. is like that. And I'm just like, yeah, it didn't really work out that great. Yeah, and I don't know if I'm at a point where I believe I'm worth being pursued because when I am pursued, I freeze up and I'm like, why? Why are you pursuing me this hard? Why are you Why are you doing this? And it makes me scared. Um, the last time I was pursued, I like had to like step back out of it and be like, you're worth it. He is pursuing you because he likes you. That's the reason. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's a weird it's place hard. to be. It's hard. But, like, you can't be in a relationship if you think it's weird that someone would love you. I know. Uh, <laughs> but I do. I do think it would be... I Sometimes I do think it would be weird for someone to be like, yes, Nicole is the person I want to be with. I mean, you saw my short film. It's about this. I know. It's sort of about, like, the idea that a character who thinks that life would just be better if I had a boyfriend. And then you have a boyfriend, you're like, oh, this created a whole new set of issues. Mm -hmm. I think that's what happened. I was in a good relationship while we were together. Like, there weren't problems. And I was like, even when there's no problems, there's so much to, to like, so much scheduling uh, I have to worry about. You know, like, all these, like, you know, like, my sleep is off now. Um, Like, he was kind of not, like, present in this moment and like why am i doing this right now it's like a lot of new things start happening Mm -hmm. um when you're in a relationship so i'm like (laughs) you know i'll just wait till i like somebody a whole whole bunch and they like me just as much back fair um you are a larger lady can i say that a big fat lady okay we've been calling ourselves a woman of size i'm a woman of size but everyone's a size yes i know but But i also everyone has fat so i like to say i'm fatter than most (laughs) <laughs> um yeah whatever you whatever feels good i gotta say i'm a big woman or mm-hmm. like a yeah uh, a fat lady none of it's scary I hate to me heavy set yeah for whatever reason heavy set gets me well it makes i'm it, like it makes me seem like i'm a brick <laughs> just like a fucking brick house and i'm like <laughs> i'm heavy set or that, like there was a mold that made you and it's like just one of the heavier versions <laughs> she's just a heavier mold no uh, I, I uh have fat parts <laughs> do you think having fat parts makes it harder to date uh, yeah because i think it one society tells people what is beautiful right now. Mm-hmm. So girls with a big ass and a tiny waist is very on trend. Fashion Nova ladies. Yes, exactly. Uh, people who can buy their bodies. Um, so, but that's not to say that no man is attracted, mm-hmm. but there is this whole other level of, uh, of like, are they fetishizing? Um, do they only like big ladies? Do you have a problem with fetishizing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't want anyone who's who is just trying to mark something off of a of a tally, you know, like, but so like a fetish isn't just a fetish of preference. N- no, <laughs> you don't think so. I think a preference is a preference is a well, fetish is like I specifically get off knowing that this person is fat. But like, what about I get off knowing this person's a woman, or I get off knowing this person? I don't know if has people, a foot. <laughs> I don't know if people do it the same way. But if I were missing a foot, and people were like, I really would like to put my dick on your. But isn't that just foot. a preference? You just want to put your dick on a stub. Like, I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is, I would like a person to like me, and then be like, and I also like, you know. What's wrong with someone being like, I like big women. I love that's big women. That's a different women. thing than like, And then someone looks at you and they're like, that's a big lady. And I think I'm into it. And then they like talk I guess to you fine. and like meet you. And they're like, I, I love the is, person who's inside They just inside have it. to be quiet about it. <laughs> they just have to quiet. I guess I would hate someone whispering in my ear like, oh, how many waffles you eat today? You're yeah. So like, I don't want, like, I don't want to be. Because I don't want to be. Actually, ab- I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> no, I just don't like the objectification sure. aspect of it. Is okay. what, what I don't like. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, so yeah, so I think it's hard because, like, men don't immediately be like, "That's that's the that's what I imagined my whole life." Because we don't mm-hmm. fit into that thing. And then if they do like you, sometimes they like only like you because they want to sleep with that body type, or 
they can sometimes be a little embarrassed to let their other friends know that mm-hmm. they're into a woman like you because then it starts to like be like, well, what does that say about me? Like a lot of body politics into it. And it's just easier for a fat man to get a girlfriend mm-hmm. than it is for a funny fat woman to get a boyfriend. I think I've mentioned this before, but I do not believe that there's chuckle fuckers for women. No, I mean, they are and they're creepy. I've only truly encountered or they're maybe magicians. Two. Oh, yeah. You were on a cruise. Not a cruise. You were no, working on a cruise. Where. That's not where it happened. It was no? not that magician. It's at the Magic Castle. It's not that magician. Go to the Magic Castle. How many castle. magicians have wanted to fuck you, Marcy? I mean, I'm sure all of the magicians who have ever <laughs> met me. They're little creeps. Um, <sighs> but no, like, yeah, like those little weirdos who are like, yeah. Baby. But I just want like, like, I don't know. I... I I want someone to appreciate my body, but also not to make the biggest deal about it. Cause I don't think that's how I, I treat men. Like mm-hmm. I just like a man and I don't want any one part of me being singled out as like the thing. Fair. Like, I just want to be like, Oh yeah, I think you're attractive. I like you. And I don't want anyone to make a huge deal about everything else. Cause I don't want to make a big deal about my body anymore. Mm-hmm. I just want to live. And like, I don't want to have to think about it all the time. So but yeah, it is harder for women who are bigger because the world tells us that if you like us, you get to write a think piece and everyone gets to be like, I love my Kirby wife. Like, what a dick. Oh, what an asshole. What a treat. What a dick. That, that was guy. such a treat. God because bless that you. woman wasn't fat. Well, even if she was, like, congratulations for <laughs> wanting a medal for liking your big fat wife. What if someone uh, replaced fat with any other thing? I love I my love Asian my- wife. <laughs> Like, that's a crazy... I love my Indian wife. I know a lot of people don't like someone from Russia, but I love my Russian wife. Oh, that's I love very her. funny. Yeah, I love all of her Russian family. It's like a crazy <laughs> thing to do. and Because he doesn't talk about... I don't know. It's just like, yeah, you should love your wife. Yeah, you married her. You dummy. Anyway, so like, it's hard for us fat girls mm-hmm. because... I'd say like 90% of culture is like, I'm not supposed to like you. And then some of them will secretly like us. And then I don't know. And then when you're dealing with a small segment of society, a society who will take you as you are, it's just not as many options for do you like them? Mm -hmm. I feel like I've been liked by a lot of men who just wouldn't date me because of my size. And I had one guy, I don't know if I've mentioned on the podcast before, but he would we worked together and then he left the job and then I left the job, but then we like kept texting cause we were friends and every couple months he'd be like, how's the gym? And I'd be like, good. And he'd be like, have you lost weight? And I'd be like, no. <gasps> and then the text would stop and then they would start again, like in, in another couple months and he'd be like, how's the gym? Have you lost any weight? And then sometimes they'd be like, yeah. And he'd be like, well, we should meet up. And then we would like meet up and he'd be like, well, like how hard are you go? And I was like, Oh, I think he's waiting for like, I think he's waiting to see me thinner. And then he would be like, now we can date. Oh, thank you. It was a very weird thing. And it goes right back to my daddy issues. (sighs) You know, that's the fucking thing. Whenever you are fat, then people can all of a sudden throw all their fat, all their body issues onto you. Uh And it's just like too much. I'm just, and I also get like sick of people saying that oh, I feel fat. Like you can feel fat. It's like yeah. what if I was like, I feel dyslexic. <laughs> I feel dyslexic. I feel illiterate. Yeah, I feel like I have cerebral palsy. Like, yeah, that's a crazy thing to say. No, it's not the same thing because we can choose to be fat, but like, mm-hmm. but not really. If w- once you're like a certain age, you're like, well, I guess I've been fat every day. It's kind of chill. <laughs> I don't know. Like I could change it, but also like. Like people, I don't know. It's just like a weird thing to mm-hmm. like, uh, and it, and I'm trying to navigate it my own way, and and it's hard to do that and like be comfortable in date and like get naked. Although you know, you're not comfortable naked. Oh, I'm totally comfortable naked. Not in front of friends and family. Me either. But, but in, in front, front of, of a, a dude, man, I'm like, you're fucking care. lucky to see these nasty little titties. Yeah, you are so don't lucky care. to find my clit. Move that fat back. I just gotta say that as far as like I'm a very analytical person and have a lot of like what rules I apply to who I like and who I won't like and what I want to do dating. Mm-hmm. But the second that the animal brain takes over the part that me that like wants to have sex when animal clicks on Mm -hmm. marcy goes away (laughs) not like that i disassociate but like that i have barely any inhibitions and which is like sort of surprising since i have so many in other ways i used to be very very self-conscious about this body uh i found 
So I've been moving stuff from my storage unit in New Jersey to L.A. because I'm never moving back to the East Coast, I don't think. Uh, and I found a bunch of pictures from high school, and there was this one picture where I'm in a pool, fully clothed. And I was like, oh, my God. I wish I could go back in time and be like, just be show your titties just like let it hang out also you will get fatter this is you're like thin now you girl enjoy this time enjoy it you look good and then i like thought back to like how many times i had sex in my early 20s where i just wouldn't take off my bra because i was like i hate these nasty little titties also television was confusing you and sometimes on sex in the city they would show you characters having sex with a bra on so you're like well maybe some people do it yeah but and then you don't know do it. it's a nudity clause and no. that's why they're yeah. not showing them titties yeah they're, they're just in a or maybe if you're in a rush you might do but that. now i'm just like whatever suck on it yeah you I mean, better find this nipple up under this titty <laughs> flip it out and put it in your mouth People are like her body is no. awful. I Whatever. Remember, I showed you my breasts, and then you weren't. You were supposed to show me yours, and you wouldn't. Tricked you. You're the. <laughs> you I've done me. that to a lot of people. You were like, show me them titties. I'm like, all right, fine. I did it to Allison Rich. Great titties. Allison, she'd be happy to hear that. She's got such a nice body. Well, you didn't say anything about mine. Thanks a lot. Uh, you have nice, nice big ones. I mean, they're Ooh, giants. Ooh, baby, I'd love to sleep in your titties. I mean, that's why babies love me. Babies like me, but and I think my it's because I look like a cartoon. No. Well, you're fine and you talk to I, them. I also think I look, you don't think I look a little cartoonish? Come on. I guess Come you on. look like a, you could be a Muppet. Okay, Marcy, I have a question. Huh. Okay, so uh, if we were in a scenario where we could date, would you date me? Why I, won't you date me? I thought about this. Also, I, we did pass up the time that we've not hooked up. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have not hooked up. But we've never made out. We've slept in beds together. Yes, very. You, I think, were the first person to tell me that I now moan in my sleep yes. instead of snoring. And you've been through the progression of my sleeping. Yes. Because I used to snore a lot, very loudly, and that would keep you awake. And now I've moved on to moaning. Yes, I love it. Um, also, but once you did booty text me. I booty texted you. Yes. And like, this is back when I lived, when we first got to know each other, like the first year you were in LA. Did I say, can I come over and make out with you? You just were like, yeah, I think you're like, can I, Marcy, what are you doing? Wake up. Can I come over? <laughs> and then in the morning I text you back and I was like, was this a booty text? You're like, yeah. And you missed your shot. <laughs> Here's a fun fact. People always have wild stories that I don't remember about yeah. me. Well, and I was just like, that's not what you do with friends, you silly goose. <laughs> you can make out with a lot of people, but you can't uh, do it with your buddies. Let me make out. No, I'm too uh, weird. Uh, I'll be weird uh, forever afterwards. Oh, come on. Uh, um, so, oh, take why why won't I date? Why, so, would I and why won't I? So, yeah. I can tell you up front, absolutely not. <laughs> and yeah, Part of it is because there are some people in your life that you want to date, and there's some people in your life that you need to keep forever, and you're a keep forever. So, I wouldn't Thank fuck you. around with like dating you because we'll be forever um also i don't think you like me that much in that way so <laughs> i wouldn't even but that's the biggest thing i like thinking about it because i kind of have this like and this is my own insecurity issues that like mm -hmm. i really need in a partner to feel special in some way i need to mm, feel i can't give that to you yeah i need to feel like someone really chooses me and that they're mm -hmm. choosing me over other people and like i i like even with like my best friend from high school like i would say like we're just best friends but we are also each other's number one mm -hmm. and i like would never question that for a second about how she feels about me that she thinks i'm one of the most like maybe the most special besides her children mm -hmm. yeah, i think i might beat her husband i don't know we'll see <laughs> uh but you know she loves her husband but like i we're we're like that and i want that in a partner mm -hmm. um and i don't i don't think you i think I, I, not that you couldn't give it to someone. I could, but, but I have a lot of walls up and mm -hmm. me breaking that wall down to be like, you are special and you mean so much to me and I need to like tell you every day as affirmation. Not even that. It's mostly just that or like, yeah. Through, like gifts, like there's different ways you can show it. And I think I don't do that to people because I'm like, if I let you know that you mean a lot to me, when you're gone, I'm just going to be hurt that much more. Yeah, I think that is the vulnerability thing that you're working on. Yes, I'm that, trying like, so hard. The the idea that you can actually need someone. 
Mm -hmm. And so I need that feeling. And I think that you uh, have made it very clear. You just want someone to date you. And that <laughs> that whole someone part is a problem for me. Fair. I'd almost want someone who's like, I like took a vow of celibacy and I'd break it for you. That's my idea. Mm. Like I'm like that man who's like, uh, I can't, I can't help it with you. I have to be with you more so than someone who's like, I play it by numbers and I guess you'll do. I will say this. Now I think I'm in a zone where I want someone special and I don't just want anyone because I mentioned it before, I'm cleaning out my storage unit in Jersey and I have a lot of my parents' belongings in there. And I was just like reading letters that my dad wrote to my mom and just a lot of stuff. And I was like, oh, like they really loved each other and like waited for each other because she was in Chicago and he was in Jersey for a while and they just wrote letters back and forth. And I was like, how special, like yeah, how so special sweet. to love someone so much that you're going to take time out of your day to write them anything and then go send it <laughs> via the post office and then wait for them to get it and wait for them to, re it's like a whole process and you spend days thinking about this person. And I was like, I want something special yeah. and romantic like that because I truly think that like my parents, they fought a lot, but they truly were each other's other half. Like yeah. they loved each other fiercely. And when my mom died, I think my dad, we all like me and my sister think he died of like a broken heart because yeah. he just waited for my sister to graduate college and then truly died a month to the day that she graduated. Ugh. And like the way he left the house, I like I started thinking about all this stuff. Like my mom's stuff didn't get cleaned out of her room. Uh, her bathroom remained untouched. She would like dust it, but like the way she left her toothpaste was left. There was a wreath on our door. Um, she died in October, so it was a fall wreath because my mother loved decorations and Michael's was her favorite store. And my uncle was trying to take the wreath down. My dad was like, Bonnie put that up there, she would want it to be up there. And it was like, you know she would have changed it for the season, but that fall right. wreath stayed up there until he died. And, uh, it's really interesting just like hearing you say this and like knowing, because I have uh, um, insight into Nicole's life because we were friends, yeah. and that you don't like to like celebrate things and you don't no. like, but I think that's all not 100% not intertwined, but I think it's connected. I also think it's connected in therapy. That, like, yeah. She was like, celebrate. Little Nicole would be so sad to see big Nicole not doing the things that she used to do with her mom. Yeah. And I and I think about like letting people in. And I think like, you know, also like, you know, like would I date a Nicole one day that like has all that stuff together? I Maybe. I think that's a possibility. Although I think we would really just get it on each other's nerves. I think so too. I yeah. think we would argue until we die yeah but that's what you want <laughs> <laughs> i i know you um i don't I, I don't do well with that that though i don't do well with arguing with a mate oh i shut off I when argue. i'm upset I could... yeah i shut down when i'm upset so like i kind of need someone who's a little sensitive to mm -hmm. that and can like you know but what else why well, and then also like yeah you have a lot of things that that well, I'm attracted to men primarily, but you know, who, who knows whatever could happen. Mm -hmm. But a lot of things that scare me about men are things that are your primary like characteristics. Yeah, baby. Like I don't like people who are very sexually aggressive immediately. That's me, baby. <laughs> Give me that dick. Yeah. Gobble, 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 gobble. It like makes me want to, yeah, uh, mace people. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I think that there's a way, but also like, I also think for you, I think someone's gonna know you a little better than just be a stranger and be like, I want to try a taste of that. I think someone's going to have a very good understanding of you and they're going to be like, all right, quit fucking around, Nicole. It would be nice to date someone who already kind of knows me. Yeah. Uh, also like someone who actually like knows me, knows me and knows that I'm kind of broken. <laughs> everyone's coming into the relationship. Everyone's sort of like, you know, that in that Tony Morrison book, it's like um, children are glass vases, and some of them have cracks, and some of them are shattered. Oh wow! Uh, but all deep. of them have damage. 
Mm-hmm. We just are like, and that's the thing. Uh, but I don't think you're a shattered person. I don't think I'm shattered either, but I do think there's a lot of cracks. Also, you've put together the pieces incorrectly. <laughs> I think that's I'm a lot. I'm walking around all fucked up. I, I really do think that a lot of it is like some like later childhood trauma that was when you re reattach the wires, you kind of did it in a strange way to like protect yourself. Yeah, well, I also have ADHD, so, like, I wasn't paying attention when I was putting myself together. Yes, yes, I do, too, I do, too, I do, too. I tell you what, taking care of mental health is a really good way. I've been trying. Me, too. Uh, It's a great thing to do for yourself. Yeah, it's, uh, but it is, like, interesting to, like, grapple with a lot of things where you're like, oh, okay, so this is wrong. Oh, you also might be bipolar, and you're like, okay. But you know what, the thing is, the brain is not who you are it's an organ that processes all the Mm. things you think all the things Mm -hmm. you see and hear and think but it's not who you are your brain's not who you are it's an organ and it can malfunction like your liver can so Mm -hmm. if you can get it working right and then through therapy like work on i don't know like you are one of the most special people that the world has ever seen oh marcy and then you, you you like and then you give time and attention to the most basic men <laughs> so i don't know i think it's not on your app that you're gonna find him. all right and i think you're gonna find someone who can handle you're gonna find a steadman <laughs> I need a studman. Because think about who would like who would just be like, I'll give Oprah a try. I think she seems like so scary and intimidating, mm-hmm. but she's also one of the best fucking people. Not that you're exactly like Oprah. <gasps> I'm exactly like Oprah. Nah. But like she found a man that was like, I'll be happy to hold mm-hmm. your purse while you and Gail go off. Ugh, that's what I need. I need a studman. Yeah. Ugh, that would be just yeah. It would be nice to have a man who is like not scared of me and like what i'm going to do and someone who has their a whole life yes too. like someone who can like i can leave you for a weekend and you're not going to be like where are you yeah like i could see you with like someone who's a little older than you yeah like a give fi- me a daddy like a 50 year old man yes daddy yeah i don't know but uh yeah i wouldn't date you i'll keep you forever instead thank you i'll get rid of the people i date <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we've come to the end of this. This was easy breezy, huh? It was easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. So do you have anything that you want to promote? Yes, you know I do. Tell me about it. On this very network, I have a podcast called A Funny Feeling with Betsy Sodaro. Yes. You were just on it. We get yes. celebrities and comedians <laughs> to tell us their paranormal experiences. Then we listen to yours as well. And then I also have another podcast called Gardition It with Jessica Jean Jardin. And we talk about the Kardashians and we love them unapologetically i mean i truly love the kardashians i turned you on to you kim did you i was not about them anti kim i was like whatever kardashians and then i was like no, always say great. i can't with kim k i remember you saying i can't with kim k i couldn't i couldn't get now, to it i wasn't you? here for it but now i am very much here for kim kardashian and all that she does the whole family's a treat chris jenner is very funny They're good great caitlin fu- i you can't write a better villain than caitlin caitlin's a bad it's one it's insane she's how, a bad potato like truly if someone were to like present the story arcs of like multiple seasons of a scripted television show your showrunner would be like this is insane isn't it though very interesting that a lot of caitlin's behaviors have always been the same but when caitlin was bruised we kind of felt sorry that yes and that, that tells you a lot about internalized misogyny yeah because you're like well we feel bad for this man who's being terrible and then he turns into a woman you're like this woman yeah sucks. once this woman has agency over her body and mm-hmm. what her future is and you're like what a bitch or not turns into a woman bruce always i know us. but you know like, but once it visually mm-hmm. before the people turns and then they're like what a bitch <laughs> also she did kill somebody let's not forget she that she did she's a murderer she a killer manslaughter chris loves a murderer oh, oj she, oh Caitlin. girl you get it into it. So yeah, that <laughs> stuff. And then just come see Nicole and I. We're always doing something yes. silly. Uh we perform together live at the UCB Theater in LA, Sundays at eleven PM. It's very fun. I will be there. I wasn't there for a while because I was filming, but I'm there for a while. Also, watch me on Loosely Exactly yes. Nicole. Marcy is on I she's an episode. Mean little fatty it's named Marcy. Very funny. We wrote it for her. Um yeah, it's great. Marcy's great. You should just follow her on Instagram. Follow her on Twitter. It's Marcy Lane. It's Marcy Lane on Twitter and then Marcy Lane 2 on Instagram. Okay. There's some other 
bitch some got other it. dumpster bitch and if you like why won't you date me please subscribe subscribe <laughs> subscribe subscribe follow it <laughs> rate it rate it five stars leave me a little message uh, you can say things like, this is on Tinder though. This man, Gabriel, said, I want to fuck that fucking big ass. Oh my God, call the cops. <laughs> um, Nick said, I like your fat ass. Um, this man said, Ooh, dang, that's a big dildo. I want to put it in me, which is <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> Balazi said, Hello, fat ass. <laughs> that's mean. <laughs> then he said, Excuse my language, but I consider it a compliment. Um, <laughs> or you could be like Joe and say, damn, your lips are gorgeous, which is very nice. And, and I true. do have great, juicy lips and that I want to attach to your butthole. <laughs> Thank you for Wait, listening. Look at my friend Human Centipede, you please. <laughs> oh, baby, let me get in your butt. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. That was a hit.